I'm going to just touch on a couple common foliar diseases of basil to give you an idea of what we might be looking at here. So one common disease is Circospora leaf spot, and you can see the characteristic leaf lesions on the left-hand side. Those lesions are kind of bounded by a darker outer ring, and then as time progresses, those lesions will become papery and a little bit lighter in color. This fungi can overwinter for a couple years, um, both infected plant debris as well as is in the soil. You'll notice a lot of similarities in management when we talk about fungal diseases. So, you know, we want to avoid overhead irrigation, use drip irrigation if at all possible. Uh, with this one, since it can persist in the soil and plant debris, using a layer of mulch to prevent that soil splash up and prevent that fungal spore from making it onto the living leaf tissue. If you see this pop up on your plants, go ahead and try to get those diseased leaves out of the garden as soon as possible to prevent it from spreading further. It's always important to get your seed from a reputable supplier and your transplants from a reputable supplier to make sure you're not bringing this into the garden on any infected plant material. Uh, so with this one, a two to three year rotation is sufficient for preventing the spread and further infection of Circospora. And in terms of the fungicides that are available to homeowners, potassium bicarbonate is recommended for this one. Now, probably the most common foliar disease we see on basil is downy mildew. So this isn't a fungi, it's a oomycetes, which is a, a similar organism, but a little bit different life cycle. So with this one, you'll start notice yellowing of the basil leaves. And so you might assume this is a nitrogen deficiency, but that yellowing will spread outward. And then those yellow spots will actually begin to turn necrotic. And so they're going to start brown, turn black. You might notice if you turn the leaves over, a fuzzy kind of purplish growth on the underside of those leaves. But the thing about downy mildew is it creates these kind of angular looking blotches that spread outward from the middle leaf vein. It takes about five to 10 days between the time the spore lands on the leaf and symptoms of infection occur. There are some resistant or tolerant, at least, varieties that are available to homeowners. A lot of times, some of these newer resistant varieties, you know, they might only be available in large quantities from commercial seed suppliers. But Johnny's Seeds, for instance, has this Prospera DMR, which stands for downy mildew resistance. And so they have that just in a standard seed packet size. So once again, you know, avoiding overhead irrigation, using drip, plant spacing to help encourage good airflow throughout your plants. And then again, potassium bicarbonate was recommended for this one. And potassium bicarbonate is kind of interesting because it does have the ability to kill fungal spores and then it creates alkaline conditions on the leaf, which are unfavorable to further fungal development. But just recognize, you know, after a heavy rain, this stuff is going to get washed off and those alkaline conditions will no longer persist on the leaf tissue. So I'm noticing some angular leaf patches. So likely looking at downy mildew infection. And this one develops when high humidity is present over 85%. And so, you know, you can recognize with heavy rains and high humidity that we have seen, you know, before this week when it cooled off, it's definitely good conditions for this to, to thrive. This one doesn't overwinter in soils. It's actually spread either from infected transplants or seeds, as well as aerial dispersal of spores. And so as I was uh, looking at some interesting university publications, they were talking about kind of a northward progression of downy mildew over the course of the growing season. So it can survive in southern soils, but not so much in our cold climate. It only takes about two hours for these spores to germinate when they have the right conditions. So you can remove infective leaves if you're able to catch this quickly enough. Just recognize, you know, you might get spores on your hand. So, you know, washing your hands as you're doing this can be important. It can be pretty hard to do that kind of leaf removal when you have severely infected plants. Kind of also interesting to note, there's a lot of basil produced in greenhouses and they actually use red lights overnight. And those red lights have the ability to inhibit the spore production. So there's some interesting kind of non-chemical controls going on out there in, in some of the greenhouses.